My mom told me not to talk to strangers on the internet, but I'm glad I did listen. We are the Certified Nunas, your sisters in the love of Asian entertainment. Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm Natalia. And I'm Sky. And it's, it's a trio today. Uh, Amanda is having a bit of a storm, loses power. Uh, it's not looking good a over there. Very cold one. A very, oh, it's freezing. Uh, Canada's getting getting hammered by the cold. Can- Canada is Canada in? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> You're getting all our cold. <laughs> like we're like the temperatures are plunging, and I and he was showing me like a like a like a satellite map that has like you know the colder it is, like the bluer it gets, and right over Montreal. It was so cold that it was just white. They didn't have a color for it. Oh, no. <laughs> like, they were just like, I was like, well, fuck well. me. <laughs> like, I'm, um, guess I'm staying home. For... So we, we had to go out today to like, we're like, let's just get like the next four days worth of food. So we like, yep. don't have to leave the house. So anyway, so it's just three of us. And uh, we're here. Uh, we're going to talk about a fella. We're just here to some talk fella. about a fella. Just a fella. Just I a feel fella. like if. I always love doing these intros because I feel like you've already you've read the title of the episode. <laughs> you've already you've already clicked, it's a mystery. <laughs> you've already clicked play. You know who we're talking about. Uh, that's right. We're talking about the man, the myth, the legend, Kim Nam Gil, as sort of the conclusion, I guess, of like Island Month. <laughs> we had a lot of fun with Island for a we'll, while. We'll have one other like yeah, that's video or live stream to round this yeah. out, like at Do the we'll, end, we'll, but like. We'll, Island will return. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and definitely will, you know, probably pick up other people. And, and you know, and I, yeah, I feel like eventually we'll probably like a Shaw and Blue episode. Yeah. Like, let's, really? Let's, really? Let's be, let's be truthful with ourselves. We know us as, <laughs> there'll probably be a Sung June episode. We know us as people. Yeah. You we, know, we know us as people. So it's just, the whole podcast is I mean, just you, the island. You episode, probably could have guessed know? it too. Like, you could, could figure out who we are as people as well. Yeah. Just, <laughs> Yeah, like, like yeah. if you listen to the island episode, we were just like, some truth, some truth. Like, it's kind of fun. We wanted to talk today about Kim Tom Gill, who I think probably has the largest filmography of anyone that we will be talking about today. Well, I think rivals Kim Hae Sook. Kim Hae Sook probably wins. I, I meant yeah. like of the island people that we would oh, do. Okay. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, cause he's been, he's been in the game for a while. Okay. He like has. he's been, he's, he's been doing his thing for a long time now and he's a talented fella and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about it. Uh, before we get into this, uh, we all pre literally 30 seconds before hitting record tonight, <laughs> we realized that we needed to figure out where we saw him first. And we have the real answer and the actual answer. Okay, so there's like an accurate answer and a truthful answer. So there's an accurate answer in which that yes was the first time we saw him in a show, but then there's the true answer of when we noticed him as an actor. So I I feel like the accurate answer is the same for all. Real Probably, lives. yeah, yeah, and that is a t- fun fact. He was in my lovely Sam <laughs> soon. Uh, did not remember that. If, the point- if you're curious, he's a super, super side small character that you won't notice. It's fine. Well, at the point I was watching my lovely Sam soon, um. That was like one of my first dramas. Yeah, like, so was like I wasn't recognizing early, anybody like, like in the like he, acting world. But but even I went and re-looked up the clips. I was like, oh, I would have yeah, I still would have been if I was just re-watching the show, I'm not sure I would have clocked him. Like that's I will I will say this yeah. though. He looks exactly the same. <laughs> like in his not age. It's not really yeah, aged everything now. I've watched him in, no matter what year it is, that no she, time like vampire style timeless so what's the what's yeah. the true what's the true answer what's the true answer so for me the pirates is when i was like oh yeah. he was the lead in that so yeah you can't really yeah. that you can't was, really miss it that was mine as well the fruit yeah pirates. um so like the first official like actual thing that i watched with him was through the darkness so recently mm-hmm. 
but like the fiery priest was so, mm, was so big. like so big and so like present on my timeline that like I definitely knew of him because of like people talking yeah. about that show but I never watched the show so mm-hmm. and then also like at the time I remember us talking to each other about like he kind he got hurt during the filming yeah. of that show. oh yeah that's so right we, we like talked about how he did a lot of his own action stuff and whatever like i, I remember feel, us talking i feel like about we that. might have mentioned him getting hurt on a news news episode we probably, probably. Did. I, like i yeah. feel like that was something that we did talk about but uh, yeah it was the pirates it was the pirates for me yeah so now sky tell us the story of Kim Nam Gil. <laughs> okay kim nam gill um that is his given birth name mm-hmm. um he was born March 13th, 1980. So, Opa. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> we don't normally get those. Or he recently was in an interview and he, he he got asked like what he likes his fans to call him, like his younger fans to call him. And he's like, uncle. He likes being called uncle. He As would. you see, he would. hello. <laughs> but, but then of course, of course the, the, the heart, the diehard fans were like, I'd prefer to call him husband. <laughs> Oh, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, so he attended a two-year college, uh, Myeongji University. He majored in theater and movies, but he eventually dropped out and didn't complete his studies. Um, he worked under Star J Entertainment Management Company when he started working professionally in the industry. Uh, he won the thirty-first audition for the NBC Television Network. It led him to perform various super minor roles for NBC. Um, at that time, in t- 2005, he wanted to change to a more exotic name of Lee Han. So, so exotic. <laughs> so exotic. Um, that didn't last very by, long, did it? <laughs> by, 28, so, by 2008, so just three years later... <laughs> He reverted back to his birth name yeah, was, because the director of Public Enemy Returns, Kang Woo Suk, was like, nah, you just go back to your birth name. Man. So, like, it's, a better, it's a better name. It's a better name. Yeah, no. mm. um, as far as like where he really started getting noticed more, and we'll talk about this all later, but essentially Portrait of a Beauty, a movie, was his first historical movie, and that's the one that people were like, oh. Who's this fella? He's doing stuff. And but and then that's what led to 2009 Great Queen Seon Duck mm-hmm. and the role as Bidam, which was like the thing that made him super duper popular. Um, People love a good Seiduck, man. They do, they do. He yeah. also, he joined a theater troupe. I only saw this in one spot. Um, he joined a theater troupe back in 2000. Like, that's I only saw that in one place. Uh, so yeah. That's that's how he started doing those things. Um, he got super popular after that, honestly. Um, so this actually around the same time. So when he finished filming Queen Seon Duk, that's when he started his charity work, essentially. Hmm. So he got super popular and uh, in 2010, he visited Indonesia, which had been hit by an earthquake. And that's what really started him being more interested in charity work. He, when he was there, he was pretty uncomfortable with the fact that cameras were following him as he did his work. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. But yeah. when he saw the documentary later that was made from that and how much money the documentary made to go back to that stuff, that made him realize actors with their influence and things, what they could possibly do with their fame. Even because I think he's kind of the type of person. He's an extrovert, but he really doesn't like calling attention to himself when he's really doing charity work all that much. Mm-hmm. He only is really calling attention to himself doing it because it earns money back to the yeah. thing that he's yeah. trying to earn money for. So he kind of figured out like how helpful that was. Um, and from then on, that was like he started paying attention to other disasters that happened in the Philippines and things like that. He eventually started in 2013 his not-for-profit organization for culture and arts, which is Gill Story. So that's He also started an entertainment company, but I'll get to that in a second. They are named the same thing. They're two different things. Um, it's his name and the word story. It's, it's his story. Yeah. So it, it was formed in 2013. 
it does a lot of stuff. It's very much an umbrella. It has a lot of projects under it. It has a lot of people that do things with it, create a lot of content. Um, the list of types. So like the common things that you would expect to think of like in an arts and culture organization, things like photographers, writers, musicians, artists, like that, that's a common thing. Oh, they're going to make content, but also people that the types of specialists that are listed under it are doctors of oriental medicine, it experts, lawyers, accountants, translators. Mm -hmm. Um, so they just do a variety of things. Kind of the main, if you want to do two main umbrella things that they do, they do a lot with cultural heritage sites, um, and creating content kind of to, bring more attention to them, but also kind of tell people stories in relation to those places. Hmm. But then second, but also the other half is like assisting kind of underprivileged people in various ways. Nice. So you kind of get both of those halves going on. Mm -hmm. um, back in 2013, they did raise like 30,000 US dollars to, or 35 million won to help people displaced by the typhoon in the Philippines in 2015, they raised 19 million won to help preserve the Seoul wall. So like sometimes they work with like the Seoul government, like they, mm -hmm. they're even really close ties with that when they're working on these like preservation type things. Um, in 2019, he did start doing stage shows for his organization so, like, the first one, I, I think the first one was in 2019. It was called Kim Nam Gil's Best Show in the Universe. <laughs> <laughs> and he hosted it. And I think other celebrities, like, would come do things as well. And it was just to raise money. It was to celebrate the five-year anniversary of the organization, but to raise money and put it towards the organization, but also just charity projects that they wanted to give money to. Um, so then, like, recently, in to 2022... They, they did another version of that stage show. I wrote it down. It was named something slightly different. Uh, Kim Nam Gil's Universe's Strongest Show. I love it. <laughs> I love the energy. I love the and he does He does like crazy. He does like crazy things, but he gets all types of celebrities to come and do stuff. Um, so for that one, the money, the funds that were raised... There was it was recently released just a couple weeks back that the funds went to launch a new campaign and the campaign was companion horse campaign it's to improve awareness of animal rights and to spread civic awareness through the treatment and prote protection of abandoned race horses um, so the way this all started there's the uh so there's there's a quote from him like where this all came from he said recently i've been taking pictures with horses a lot so i became interested in animals appearing in the media they were mainly retired racehorses, but I know now how to help them because the racehorses often are abandoned or traded illegally when they are injured. Um, he came up with the campaign himself. He hopes that awareness of animal rights will spread through the campaign and the treatment of animals filmed together will be improved. So also <laughs> specific, <laughs> but also specifically, so to make it even more, oh my goodness, um, there was a specific horse named oh. Starry Knight that Starry Knight worked as a racehorse from 2008 to 2011, discharged from service, rescued from an abandoned farm where they had been, where the horse had been doing horseback riding stuff for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. The horse was so skinny that the ribs were exposed and the legs were severely swollen from so much running. Now, so they rescued the horse and the horse is now in a sanctuary in Jeju and all the funds from that stage show that he did um donated towards this and also plus m entertainment which was a part of like the hunt movie that i mm -hmm. think he was a part of yep they they joined in donating towards this as well mm -hmm. so like and also not not just yay kim nam gil but like all there's a lot of celebrities that were involved in his stage show for this so like a lot of people donated their effort and time so, so cool. it was really nice that um so yeah, they saved a retired racehorse, and they, and they they will continue to do so. Like this is you know something what? that became really important to him. I see why so many fans call him <laughs> the know? perfect man. Doesn't ex oh, wait. Oh, wait, hold, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, excuse oh. me, sir. Mm -hmm. I'll talk about his uh, hobbies for a second. So <laughs> uh -oh. this could. 
can either make him the perfect man or less of a perfect man. Let's find out. <laughs> well, you know when you look at these bios and some of them are ancient compared yeah. to mm-hmm. like what you actually see of these people when you watch their like variety show appearances and stuff. So I'm pretty sure this was an anciently old bio. This is what it said his hobbies are. Play, playing the flute. <laughs> Love it. Tap Love the dancing. Perfection. Mm-hmm. Water skiing and taekwondo. Now the taekwondo thing, I actually believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, you know what? I believe all of it. <laughs> I, I believe all of it. I don't know. I, like, I when I think believe. of Kim Nam Gil, do I think tap dancing? Uh, I, you know, listen, maybe he's a spry fellow. Maybe he needs, you know, de-stress yeah. to put on them old metal, metal sole shoes, do a little tippity tap. <laughs> as far as yeah. what I have seen his hobby be from like his appearance in Master in the House, a variety show, he likes walking a lot. <laughs> he okay. walks everywhere. That's like that's his the, thing. The tap dancing was too frenetic, too crazy. <laughs> He's just gotta go on a chill meditative <laughs> walk. Like He's doing walk. some walking meditation, just having he, a good time. He also really loves comic books. Like that is, Mm -hmm. it has been a huge thing for him. So the two things that he likes drawing inspiration from for his acting, comic books are a big one. He talked about it a lot on Master in the House episode. On on this Master in the House episode, in case you don't know the way that show is set up, there's, they go to famous people and the famous people are kind of supposed to teach them a variety of things or whatever. Mm -hmm. Kim Nam Gil didn't want to do that. He just kind of made it like a fun outing, essentially, the entire time. And one of the parts of it was they went to one of those, uh, like, comic book cafe type places. And they just sat there and, like, ate and read comic books. Um, he pulls he pulls a lot of inspiration for those. Um, so even his B-Dom role in the Queen's Seon Duck, like a lot of the facial expressions and stuff. Mm-hmm. He he has a specific cartoon character that he pulled from for that. Um, and and it's cool. like a historical comic book or whatever. He's one of us, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> one of us. And so secondarily, he loves all the comedians like in Korean entertainment. Like mm-hmm. he 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 just adores and he's he's very easy to laugh. Like he's just mm-hmm. constantly laughing. Um so anytime he works with a comedian, like on a variety show stuff, like he just kind of glomps onto him because he just thinks they're like the best person ever. And uh, he uses comedians as inspiration for his acting as well for the roles mm-hmm. that that's appropriate. Like he likes mm-hmm. all the expressions and stuff. I think he likes to kind of figure out how he can implement those things. Mm-hmm. So as far as his personality, everyone calls him like a puppy dog. He is so chatty on sets of filming and stuff to where like his senior actors like they're like oh my gosh he is talking all the time so they give him a hard time about that so what you're telling me is he's not like van (laughs) (laughs) he's the complete opposite he's pretty much the complete opposite is what you're telling me (laughs) uh yeah so he gets (laughs) people another thing people kind of make they say he's immature they don't mean that like as a jab like playful. they mean it as he's always playful like mm-hmm. no matter if he's dealing with a senior in the industry or like someone younger than him um he he always likes to keep the mood light he he's very very encouraging so with island in particular like we kind of talked about this but He's just very encouraging to like all of his co-stars with everything. He will, he'll, he'll go when he's not even filming, he'll go watch their filming and he'll give pointers and stuff and he'll just try to help, which that's, he's been in the industry for so long. He, Mm -hmm. he doesn't have to do that. Like, it's a very sweet gesture that he does things like that. So, and it's not just like his peers as far as age or notoriety. He does that for people that haven't been in the industry as long, so. That's really cool. Um, And I guess another side note that I didn't even write down, but like, obviously, he does a lot of his own stunts at this point. Mm -hmm. As far as if that's wise or not, that's up to him to figure out. um, It's it's your body, my guy. I guess I do have a few more things. So one little side note, there was a... um, 
back in 2021, there was a gallery um, that showed 200 Korean actors and actresses that was displayed at the Korean Cultural Center in New York. Mm-hmm. It also is online. It's called The Actor is Present. Um, it's still oh, online. Yeah, yeah. You can still check it out. Um, it's black and white pictures and sm- descriptions and bios of all of these movie actors and actresses um, over the years. And it's it's really cool. So they kind of have a summary of like what kind of personifies that person so what they said about him was sexy but pure serious but comical he has a multi-layered image where various moods coexist which Hmm. even in his most recent interview they asked him like sexy or cute and he's like both like (laughs) i'm both I'm, i'm gonna be real i just like googled it to look at the pictures these pictures got real dilf energy. <laughs> like, like I'm looking at them and, and we'll energy. have a we'll have a link on our uh, post, okay. but it's really easy to find. It's it's literally the actor is present dot mm-hmm. kr. Yeah, and so if you want to go check it out, there's a ton of other actors and actresses on there. It's a pretty neat little online gallery yeah. at this point. Um, there, of course, are a ton of details about the physical um, gallery and stuff that existed back in. 2021 so there's a lot about that um some other things so recently as far as what types of roles he wants now in life his recent interview he said i want to try mellow romance Mm -hmm. king he wants to be a king and i'm also good (laughs) you would i'm also good in romantic comedy i don't know why they keep sending action dramas. I'm tired of doing action now. Yeah, uh, I would like. I would like to see him smooch. Thank you. Like mm-hmm. he's also he's also super playful when he's doing this. So yeah. as far as like, does he actually hate action? No, no. He, he probably just done a little too many in the like back to back. Yeah. <laughs> I would also like to see him in these things. You yeah. Know, why, I am, why not combine? Why? Combine all of those ideas. There is a drama out there that's like a romantic comedy, but also mellow about mm-hmm. a sake, a king, sake, or a fantasy <laughs> yeah. king. Perfect. Just he's waiting yeah. for you. Just send him. Send it to him. Well, what's funny? There was an interview with the Island cast, and they were like, "What type of shows do you typically watch in your spare time?" And all of them were like we mostly watch rom-coms so it, he was like yeah i really like rom-coms i don't really watch action <laughs> he's like i i unwind with a good rom-com it's like okay buddy that's fun um oh one other thing i wanted to say about his appearance on master in the house he donated his entire pay fee thing to the charity that they were raising money for so as they were doing that episode they counted all the steps of the two days on pedometers that each of the Mm -hmm. cast members did and so they did all these activities to try to get more steps the entire time Mm -hmm. um and as they got x amount of steps they donated so much money towards an organization that was raising funds for school supplies for kids in need and so they helped like over 100 kids but then just through a text, like they showed, he, he didn't make it a big deal. It was like after the fact, he told them to just donate his fee to the same organization. Oh, he seems like a good egg. <laughs> he seems like a real good egg. <laughs> That's what my grandmother would have said. He seems like a good egg. A good egg. <laughs> we all want to marry him. Yeah. He's, like... really, he's really the type of person that like... If, if you were lost in Korea, you wish you could just call somebody like that up and be like, "Can you come help me for a second? Like, he would be okay. the perfect place to like, you know, you are like visiting Korea and you know him, and you're like, "Oh, I'm gonna call up this person because he will tell me everywhere to go and like find yeah. the fun stuff." You know, and like, then he'll be like, some yeah, people are just good at that. Like, I'll just take you. I'll just take you. Don't worry about it. Let's go. And what I find is like really funny about him is that he he's very like big on dad humor like, yeah that's how he is the deal he energy do, extends yeah, it's, it's like <laughs> very very corny <laughs> you're like this is great <laughs> and it fun. feels it feels pretty old school a lot of the times yes. too yeah. 
And it's like, oh, that's funny. And, he, and he's not that old. Like, he's only yeah, a couple he's really years not... older than me, you know? Right. I was, I was watching the episode of him on The Manager, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where he, he is, <laughs> he so is the manager in The Manager. Yeah. Like, he's not the one being managed because he has exactly one person at his entertainment. Oh, let me spit off of that a oh. second. I forgot. I have a little paragraph. So, the entertainment industry that he started, Gil Story entertainment uh in 2021 that's when he started that he was a co-ceo um but they kind of call him the main ceo it's him and then the actress that was featured on the manager with him um yeah. that's it lee so lee kyung so like she's younger she's mm-hmm. super super introverted which is comical because he is not mm-hmm. um but also at the same time he's very gentle so like he yeah. doesn't you know he doesn't yeah. push her or anything yeah. But you can talk about it now. I just wanted to mention, oh, yeah. like, that, so, that's that other part. So basically, it, like, the episode is really funny because they really actually good. didn't tell any of the other people that he was there. So all of, like, the regular hosts of the show think that they're going to see her manager. And then it, like, the show starts. And then you see Kim Nam Gil being like, oh, what are we doing today? And they're like, wait, no. No. <laughs> and then they're like, is, is he here? Is <laughs> Is he here right now? And then you know, like they're like, he's here, and they're like, get him, get him in here! Don't make him sound <laughs> like what the hell is this? But anyway, he is so sweet to her. He is very and just, sweet, and just like so nice to all of his employees, and like it's just. There's the one scene where they're in the car and they're talking about like whatever the, what is it, the movie or the drama that like had just aired or whatever. And it was like getting really good reviews and stuff. And he was like talking about how he read it because he had like read all this stuff while he was waiting for her to do stuff to like take her. And he's like, I'm really excited that like everybody's like really receptive of it. And everybody says you're, you have, you're good actress and stuff. And I, it's really great to hear that sort of thing. And he was very like, Dad. <laughs> dad, it was bad like, energy. I'm, yeah. child, He's like, I'm, I'm very proud, proud of you. Of you. <laughs> and yeah. he, and yeah. it was like the most sincere thing too. He was gen- yeah. he genuinely like, this is really great, and you should be really proud of yourself. Type deal. And I was just and, like, and like if you're if you're wondering it, it, why it, it, this actress is the only actress in his company, they did actually star in a movie together where she played his younger sister. So it, mm-hmm. I feel like which movie was it? Uh, it was Odd Family, the zombie oh, one. Oh, yeah. I, d- I didn't get around to seeing that no. one. That's fine. Oh, well, I did. <laughs> I, oh, I, I did. You'll hear <laughs> about it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll tell you all about it. Uh, but but, but what, what, is, oh. what is nice about that manager episode is like, he kind of like he play he's playful with her and stuff but again mm-hmm. it's never awkward and it's never forced and you can tell that even though she's super introverted she's very comfortable with him mm-hmm. and stuff yeah. and so even though he's the ceo he's yeah. the boss and he's also very much a senior in the industry but it's obvious that he's like hyper approachable and, and he's I still and like awesome. he's still roasting her jokingly about <laughs> being terrible at cooking like it's yeah. right. you know like it's funny like it's, yeah. or, clearly or, or he'll friend. be like oh wait we had to pay money for this like the whole like yeah mm-hmm. not liking to spend money stuff yeah <laughs> like it's a good time. they're like making the candy and he stirs it and she's like no you can't stir oh, it <laughs> like <laughs> and he just kind of walks out. <laughs> he, just, he literally just like silently like you know like the gif of like homer simpson like retracting into the bushes <laughs> that was basically him just like and leaving he, the room he like when he go get them coffee and he kind of just like came back and was like coffee just appeared <laughs> It's, it's a fun episode you should they, they have a it. coffee shop in the building yeah. for the company and anyone can get whatever coffee drinks yeah. they want anyone who works at the company can get yeah. and all the like free. the hosts were really excited about that they were like oh that's really sweet that's really nice it like uh, promotes a lot of like niceness in the company because you can go and get coffee <laughs> <laughs> And what was also funny about it is he, so he would end up like taking her to interviews and whatever, but sometimes he would kind of forget the role that he was supposed to be as the manager. He'd just kind of like start gabbing with people just because that's <laughs> him. And then he'd be like, oh, you need to talk to her. Okay. Like, I'll be quiet he's now. He's not a I'm very sorry. good manager, but he's, it's okay. Because it was just for He tried. He it tried. was just for goofs. <laughs> well, when you know everybody, and you're so yeah. used to like being the one who's like in those situations. You just kind of do it, like you don't even think about it. Yeah, 
it was just really cute. So I highly recommend that episode. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna like mix it up a little. Normally we do the awards later, but like I feel like between the three of us, we may have watched many a thing that we want to chat about. So we're just gonna go through his uh, vast amounts of awards and nominations mm-hmm. now. Um, uh, Jesse's gonna take us through his yes. storied history of his. And I will say a little shout out. um, This was actually Amanda's section. So she's the one who compiled all this research. So I want to give credit where credit is due. So let's pretend like I'm Amanda. (laughs) Yeah, we do the shenanigans. We had to shuffle some stuff around. That's fine. But I just wanted to make sure, you know, a little little nod to Amanda who couldn't be here with us. Um, So I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because there's a lot of awards here. (laughs) Um, So in 2008, um, he was nominated for the Best New Actor in in Public Enemy Returns at the Blue Dragon Film Awards. And then in 2009, uh, he won the new TV icon at the Style Icon Awards. He also was nominated for Best New Actor in uh, Queen Son Duck and won the Excellent w- Excellence Award and Best Couple for Queen Son Son Duck at the NBC Drama Awards. Awards. People love that show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, at the Korean Culture and Entertainment Awards, um, he won Best New Actor for Modern Boy. At the Grand Bell Awards, he was nominated for Best Supporting Actor and Best New Actor in Modern Boy. And then in 2010, um, he won Best New Actor in Television for Queen Son Duck for at the Big Sang Art Awards. And then for the SBS Drama Awards, he was nominated for Top Excellence Award in Bad Guy. Uh, there was a little bit of break. And then in 2013... He was nominated for best or for top excellence award um, actor and excellence award actor in mid length drama for work in Shark at the KBS Drama Awards. In 2014, at the Asian Film Awards Special Awards, he won Asian Rising Star. In 2015, at the Buell Bial sorry Film Buell? Awards, um, he was nominated for best actor in Shameless. 2016 at the Big Sang Art Awards, he was nominated for Most Popular Film Actor in Pandora. And then in 2019, be right Things away. went down. Things went down <laughs> Things in went 2019. Down. Okay, at the Big Sang Art Awards, he was nominated for Best Actor te- Actor Television in The Fiery Priest. In the Busan International Film Festival, he won for Best Actor for The Fiery Priest. In the Grimme Awards, he won Best Actor for The Fiery Priest. In the Cre- uh, Korean Broadcasters Awards, he won Best Actor for The Fiery Priest. <laughs> There's a no. uh, SBS Drama Awards. He was nominated for Top Excellence Awards and Producers Award and won the Day Sang, which is the grand prize, like big award uh, for his work in. Can you guess Stay it? with us. The Fiery, the Fiery Priest. Priest. <laughs> and, and then in the Solner <laughs> National Drama Awards, he won Outstanding Korean Actor for The Fiery Priest. And then he was also awarded the Prime Minister's Commendation by the country of South Korea, which is an award uh, for contributing to the arts and Korean pop culture. What a year 2019 what was. What a year. What a year. <laughs> the fire really, really, yeah. He was clean enough. He was clean enough. So in 2020, he won uh, won the Performer Awards Actor for the Fiery Priest at the Korea PD Awards. Um, and he was also listed as the 17 on the Forbes Korea Power Celebrity list. Ooh. Ooh. In 2021, uh, at the Brussels International Fantastic Film Festival, he won the Silver Raven Award for The Closet. And then, a, that sounds pretty prestigious, that Silver it Raven Award. It does. <laughs> and then in 2022, which is the most current thing, he won a slew of things, um, but all for one <laughs> one show um and so, this one deserved 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 oh. so yeah. and the Seoul international drama awards he was nominated for best actor in through the darkness for sbs drama awards he was nominated for director's award top excellence award and best supporting team for through the darkness and then he won the day sing uh the blue dragon series awards he was nominated for best lead actor in through the darkness the Beck Sang Art Awards, he was nominated for Best Actor in Television for Through the Darkness. And then the Korea Drama Awards, he was nominated for the Day Sang for Through the Darkness. And then at the APAN Star Awards, he was nominated for the Top Excellence Award in Through the Darkness. 
And um, if you haven't heard his acceptance speech for the day song for through the yeah i was gonna say that like it's fantastic so you can find the awards show on kokowa completely Mm -hmm. subbed but it's 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 the best Uh, i did find it very amusing when you actually search for through the darkness on kokowa to watch it it also pops up the award show oh that's cool it knows yeah it's like you're here for that right um but like the big thing with that is that he the who he mentions in the award is is i think very telling of who he is as a human being um because we'll talk about more about like through the darkness but through the darkness he plays a real person so the things that happen in the show are kind of real things you know um and he made a point of uh, acknowledging the families of those who were uh victims uh of some of the, the serial murderers that they talk about in the show uh, it was one of the first things he said in his acceptance speech, but he also found it really interesting. He made point of talking about the the actors who were playing those roles in the show, and he acknowledged how uh, brave it was for them to do that kind of role, knowing that the public perception of them could be tarnished because they can't they won't be able to like separate them as like an actor because they are Mm -hmm. really terrible people and you thought they were extremely brave and they also got to showcase like their acting skill and it was just it's a beautiful speech like it's so good really uh we'll talk about through the darkness in a little bit yeah uh, because listen we got a lot to get through (laughs) we we really do okay so here's how we're gonna do the filmography here He's got one, like, okay, so we'll start off in 2000, this is going to seem bizarre, but it makes sense in my mind, just stay with me, the Natalia logic is going. He made, uh, in 2007, we're going to start with this, he had, like, he was part of, like, a miniseries omnibus special called Several Questions That Make Us Happy, so it was sort of like a TV special. He was in that. It's just about, like, normal people and their problems, so that's, like, impossible to find, but if you find it, go nuts. So that's like the TV special he made. Now, we're going to do movies after this, and then we're going to do TV at the, as the third thing. That is my order. The TV special, movies, TV. All right. Okay, we, we got this. We're here. Right. We're here. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> so um, basically, for movies, uh, he had basically a uh, un- practically uncredited uh, role in the... Nope, sorry. I'm confused. Cut. Okay, starting for movies. His first movie he was in was in 2004, where he had a bit part, a real, real bit part in the movie called Low Life, uh, where he played a nameless police officer. Uh, the movie's basically like a gangster film set in post Korean War. Korea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 2006, he finally gets a named role uh, in the movie Don't Look Back. Uh, now, when I tell you the plot of this movie, it's fucked up, okay? <laughs> so stay with me. Uh, so it's a movie about a phone technician who illegally taps a woman's phone because his friend's trying to blackmail her, um, but then falls in love with her through her phone conversations, and she doesn't know he exists. <laughs> so, um... Uh... Uh, yeah. no romance. Uh, so he just plays like a friend of a friend. Like he's not, <laughs> he's, like, not involved in any of that whatsoever. Uh, in 2006, he got his main role in the drama No Regret, where he the played- movie. Oh my fuck! Okay, Jesus. Okay. No, that's, that's, it's fine. It's like the it's, you know how mo- movies drama is what you yeah. It is drama. Yeah. So in 2006, he got his first main role in a movie uh, where he played a rich gay man from a conservative family who falls for a gay orphan who works at a host bar. Uh, Sky, you watched, you looked this movie up. What were your thoughts? Um, it was, I thought it was really well done. It is very sad. Mm-hmm. Um as far as if you're it, it's not on any of the typical legal yeah, yeah, yeah. environments that you Oy, would go look like, for yeah. it. so so as far as like probably a lot of people aren't necessarily going to go seek it out but um he did a really good job like a lot of screen time um 
and yeah, really, really emotional and hmm. stuff. So I thought I thought they did a really good job. I wonder if Gaga Wula has like a request form. That Ooh, we they might. It in. Mm. Always thinking. Always thinking. Do, do they go super? Risky? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just making no, sure because sure I've it was. seen on there. Hey, oh. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> oh. I mean, obviously, stuff. I'm obviously one of the main characters works at a host bar. So like, yeah, yeah. There, sex is <laughs> sex is a part of this film. Yes. Uh, and sex is a part of many a film on this list. So. <laughs> it's a part of many a life. <laughs> many, many a love story. Um, okay, so in 2008, he had a support role in Public Enemy Returns, uh, which is a sequel to the movie Public Enemy, uh, in which a cop is investigating the murder of a high school student and is led to a man who employs three of the victim's school friends. Kim Nam Gil, one of them friends. <laughs> Uh, in 2008, he had another support role in the movie Modern Boy, uh, the plot of which is a man whore slash government general in the 30s occupied Korea falls, this is a real plot, falls <laughs> for a mysterious femme fatale who basically like frames him for a bombing, all sorts of shit. Anyway, Kim Nam Gil plays a d- Japanese detective and did win an award. For the record, I looked high and low for this because I was super invested. Hey, Sue is in it as well. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Got, can't it, find looks, it. it looks like something we would enjoy. And like yeah. the costuming looked really mm-hmm. cool. I was like, but I at least want to be a part of it. won an award for it and we can't <laughs> find it. Uh, in 2008 is his first big movie role. Like big as not as in like main role but like big as in people were like oh take a look at that guy uh was in portrait of a beauty uh where a woman is forced to take over the identity of her brother a court painter whose name she had been using for her own painting career because you know women misogyny yeah. women aren't allowed to be painters uh-huh. uh after he commits suicide uh however her paintings of women are considered obscene um <laughs> real, real <place. laughs> yeah like Ooh, like that's actually what <laughs> women they when they look, look like. like. Yeah. <laughs> Kim Nam Gil plays her uh, her lover. And, mm-hmm. Anyway, you know, it'd be what it'd be. Uh, it Juno's- was. The, did anyone else watch it? No, I no. didn't. Get, I didn't get around to it. Okay. okay, I really liked it. I thought oh, it was good. really good. Um, yeah, his I've heard characters- good things. I've heard good things. So it's risque too, just in case you were wondering. Um, but yeah, like I thought it was fun because there's cross dressing, obviously, because. Mm-hmm. You know, she to be your brother. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it doesn't end happy. I'll, I'll literally say that for you. But mm-hmm. his, his Listen, character it's is real really, history. So his, his yeah. character is very like low born, uh, spice of life type person. So okay. like, nice. it, it's it's a fun character. Um, but kind kind of since since the main role, the girl who's pretending to be a who is a court painter pretending to be a male, of course. Um, so sheltered, you know, so mm-hmm. over there in mm-hmm. high society stuff. So he kind of shows her life essentially. And then that's, she sees women bathing. And so then it kind of like, Oh, like normal people are like this. And so she mm-hmm. kind of, she goes to a brothel and like paints normal people are like this. And she doesn't see anything obscene about it. She's it's the beauty mm-hmm. of people. Yeah. She, she it wasn't even really a sexual thing to her it was just like this is people being people yeah. and so whenever the conservative court people see this it's oh. like how dare the a breast oh a yeah. female presenting nipple <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah. so that's why like it was pretty and it was very very pretty very well done the costuming was great mm. stuff like that oh uh, he had a very small guest role in the 2009 movie Handphone, uh, the plot of which is an actor is threatened by his ex-girlfriend who's put salacious material <laughs> into his cell phone. <laughs> uh, that becomes more topical as time goes on, doesn't it? The plot of that film. <laughs> yeah. uh, in 2010, he was the main lead. This, this movie, okay. <laughs> in- I, I didn't end up watching it. Okay. Oh, I okay. did. <laughs> vanished um where he plays uh, a, a wrongfully convicted convict who escaped <laughs> who escaped prison 
by giving himself HIV. Oh my god! Because he's told that if you have AIDS, you will be released from Korean prison. This is not true. And it's but, not true. And he. Oh no, I can't say. Okay, okay. <laughs> in order to seek revenge for being falsely imprisoned, but that that goes awry. So he just ends up to and going to meet the ex girlfriend of the prisoner from whom he gave himself AIDS. It's a wild movie. <laughs> it's a wild movie. Uh, it's a. But it's like Mokjong storyline, but mellow mm-hmm. acting. Yeah. Oh. It's like, imagine it's very if, like, sad and if, very... If, a, if a slice of life had a wild plot book. Yeah. Um, like I it's, will... it's draining. I would say yeah. it's, it's draining. It's very heavy. Yeah. And I will warn people. It is on Tubi if you want to watch it, but I will mm-hmm. warn for free. But I will warn people. It's also on is... Kokowa. Yeah. Is it? I think so. I, I was on Tubi, yeah. yeah. Um, there is a uh, rather, not, I wouldn't say explicit, but, like, graphic is the wrong word, but um, present rape scene. Mm -hmm. So if that is a trigger for you, uh, don't watch this movie. Also, suicide. Yeah, suicide. uh, Also, anyway. It's a wild movie. It's a wild movie. And And we're only talking about, like, half of it the the main female her story is it's wild as well like wild too i liked it though like i thought it was good i I, like like, didn't i liked it but i was just like when i was like i just got this movie wild (laughs) i was like uh. (laughs) like unhinged yeah Uh, (laughs) in 2014 uh he starred in the pirates as a bandit who decides to give up banditry for banditry on the sea uh, in order to hunt for a state seal that was swallowed by a whale. Fun movie. Fun, fun. movie. Very fun. What what I found funny was like, so since this was the first role I saw him in, I was I liked I liked his character mm-hmm. bouncing off of Sonny Jen's character. Like that that was that was a fun chemistry thing. And then Later on, when I watched the drama Shark, they were the main two people in that, too. So I was like, that was fun. Aww. But uh, the Pirates, it, I've talked about it before back when I first watched it, but I'm going to talk about it again for a second. It's everywhere. It's on YouTube. Yeah, like, it's everywhere. it's it's, mm-hmm. it's literally everywhere. And, and when I say YouTube, like, it's legally on YouTube. Um, <laughs> like, YouTube put it on. It's not like, you would quite, like it's reverse. Air quotes YouTube. Like, yeah. <laughs> It, it, it's, it's everywhere. User but... X4000. <laughs> B9642. Yeah. Um, pretty much, if you like Pirates of the Caribbean, go oh, watch yes. the Pirates. Like, yeah. I just, that's always my selling line. Like, if that's something that you enjoy, because, like, my husband, he, he likes Pirates of the Caribbean, mm-hmm. so I made him watch it when I was re watching it for this episode. And so, afterward, he really, really liked it. And afterwards, I was like, so compared to Pirates of the Caribbean, which do you prefer? And he's like, this one, this one's like, yeah, it's really because it doesn't stop. It doesn't really stop to have conversations. It just it's action the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> so he really enjoyed it. Uh, in 2015, he uh, was the main in a movie called The Shameless, where he played a jaded cop who was offered money by a mobster to maim an enforcer during an arrest, only for that to, to go wrong. And he ends up running away with girlfriend of this mob this love there's like both anyway it's a it's a toxic mess of a relationship chart <laughs> to be honest did um, you watch it no but i i was looking into it and i was like "Ooh, that's a hot mess i watched <laughs> it i watched the shameless and was um, it a hot mess <laughs> it was a hot mess wow yeah. he 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 goes under like he he does a different name and like he is mm-hmm. he he plays he doesn't play a cop his cop goes undercover and like it's all a thing. It's yeah. It's it's pretty. I'm not saying it's graphic. It's 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 kind of sad. It's mm-hmm. violent. Um, there's really good fight scenes. Like if you're into like good fight scenes, um, a lot of like just drugs and abuse and yeah stuff. Yeah, underworld. And as far shit. as yeah, it's weird. It's, d- don't look there for happiness. Yeah, put it that way. Like, no. Nah. Uh, <laughs> following that energy, uh, in 2015, uh, we have the sound of a flower. Um, which was the story of the first professional female pansori singer in mm-hmm. Korea. And fun fact, if you actually Google her, 
her there's a literal photograph of her so this was like in the oh, late cool. 1800s you can see an actual photograph of this woman and this whole story is all true um so he plays the father of the child king uh who then becomes infatuated with the singer played by bay susie now i will uh, warn those out there uh, if you got a real problem with uh middle-aged dudes being in love with teenagers this movie's gonna be a rough ride okay <laughs> like it's a good movie though i enjoy well it. and i i do want to insert like it's based on a true story as far as factually they know the they know the woman's name and they know yeah. like they know like how she ended up because yeah. you know affiliated with the king things like that but as far as the details of her personal life past yeah. that yeah. don't exist so like well like they do they do know in. that like like the main dude who's not like the main character on the movie is is her like singing Mentor. teacher uh, yeah. was in love with her wrote several songs <laughs> about being in love with her despite being uh, many years her senior uh, but funny mm-hmm. interest i was like looking into her because i be I, while i was watching i was like this is so intriguing no one quite knows how she died but they think that the queen might have had her assassinated oh. so oh, ooh, oh. like that's like a big theory is like that she was secretly assassinated like that i was like oh mm. that's fucking wild like damn <laughs> Susie did a really good job in it, too. Yeah, she did. She was great. Uh, that's also on Tubi for free, if you want to watch it. So, Kim Nam Gil, yeah. Kim Nam Gil plays the king-ish character. Yeah. Well, the, the father of, like, the child king. So, he's really the king. Yeah, you know, like... But, yeah. 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 It was well done. It was a real. It was a good movie. Uh, in 2016, he was the lead of the movie Pandora where he plays a worker at a nuclear power plant, the power plant of which claimed the lives of his father and brother previously, uh, who is now at work, just going to work, when there is another nuclear meltdown at the power plant. Hmm. Um, I did, I did, did watch this film. It delivers exactly what the synopsis <laughs> promises you it is going to deliver is it one of those, if you like action movies you're gonna like this yeah, like if you like disaster movies this is the movie for you <laughs> it's on netflix um i was i was i was in the states it's on netflix mm. i'll i'll preface it this way i was i was getting ready to watch it and i knew i knew it was a disaster movie yeah. like i i knew that but i went and watched the trailer first because my husband and i were considering watching it and I was like, oh, emphasis on sad for that. No, nah, I think I'm good. Like, nah, I ended <laughs> yeah. up. <laughs> it was it on, on my now, list, so. uh, but I still haven't figured out my right. time management with life and things, so I didn't get to watch as much as it. It's, it's, but it's, it's there. A the little pencil mark is right there. <laughs> Planned a lot. <laughs> like, it's, it's literally exactly what you would expect the movie to be. Mm-hmm. Like, there's it's what it is. Uh, in 2017, he was the main in oh, One Day, also on Tubi for free, um, where he plays an insurance investigator who's currently dealing with the death of his wife, but also investigating a case where a blind woman was hit by a car and left in a coma. And then he discovers that he can see the spirit of this blind woman who befriends him. And it is, we talked about it in the last episode. It is fantastic. Yeah, so how much did you end up liking it? Because I, I loved the movie. Oh, I loved it. I <laughs> loved it. It was so good. Um, and it's it not, it's fun. really not a, like, make you weep. It's not trying to make you, like, unnecessarily cry or something. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not the aim just of it. Just poignant. So, my whole thing is, so I'm going to do my little spill. I think that One Day is a really good movie for really anybody to watch if you can handle it. It is about death. It's about grief. So, like, of course, mm-hmm. do not do not go if you cannot handle it this moment or ever or whatever. But it talks a lot about end-of-life care, mm-hmm. um, tough mm-hmm. decisions with that stuff. And the reality is that's stuff that we're all going to face someday. So yeah. it's actually... And it's... When I say it's a light touch, they don't make it silly or anything, but it's simple the way they cover those things to where that's why it's a good kind of introduction to maybe thinking about those things for people that maybe mm-hmm. haven't yet. Um, 
and maybe start conversations with your family about those types of topics. Yeah. Like, yeah, that type of discussion sucks, but like, we're all people. So yeah. like, that's, that's a thing. So, mm -hmm. but it's really well done. His character, he's just a dude. He's just a dude. He's like, dude. he's literally just a dude. Like, <laughs> He's just trying to, he's not even like, oh, I'm a nice guy. He's just like, I'm just trying just to be. A baseline average dude in every single way. Uh, reversing the energy of one day. Um, in 2017, he was also starred in Memoir of a Murderer, which is about a serial killer who was never caught, but now has Alzheimer's. Yes. Is, that is increasingly becoming more and more severe suspects that his daughter's boyfriend who is a local cop played by Kim Dam Gil is also a serial killer mm -hmm. when I tell you this movie is the most fucked up movie it is it's it is so, so good though <laughs> so it good so, it's so good it is also on Tubi for free if yeah you'd like to so watch it. so when you compare it to like through the darkness level of like showing like serial oh, so killer so scenes shows way Way. Okay, like yeah. through the darkness was on TV, like network television so yeah yeah like and this, this is like more of like a not real type yeah it's very like and also a, like it, 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 he like the the main character is the serial killer so everything's told from his point of view but yeah. it's like and i always really like stories that are like you have a very unreliable narrator and he's the most the, unreliable yeah narrator the way that it unfolds on this movie is wild. really good it's, it's wild. yeah yeah <laughs> like like it, it was a, so a ride good. like and you were questioning everything and it was like Perfect like by the end, you're way. like, is this man even a serial like, killer? Like, you, don't you don't even know. know. There's like just all know. this stuff, and uh, oh, um, <laughs> so, and the uh, yeah. his daughter is played by um, oh, what's her name from AOA? Sol Hyun. Yeah, Sol Hyun. Who is and she's in uh, the awesome music video? You know, yeah, that. she's yeah, so yeah. she's so good. She is like, good. Everyone, everyone in this movie, it's doing yeah, the most. Yeah. it's incredible. Yeah, the the main guy who plays the serial killer with alzheimer's phenomenal like I, kim nam gil is great in this don't get me wrong yeah. but like he's he's the star of the, the show it's, holy shit that oh it takes you wild. on such a wild ride it's yeah i had a lot of fun watching that like it was a a good movie experience yeah uh in 2017 there's also memoir of a murder another memory that's literally just the director's cut mm. of memoir of a murder it's put as a different thing because okay. it actually has a different ending oh. than the original okay. um i could not find it i didn't try looking for it yeah, but... i was like okay i i, I thought it, before i hadn't like looked it up before so i was like oh they made like a sequel or something like i thought or yeah like, like a like, prequel I I was like, see, oh, yeah. yeah it was like oh no it's just the okay no oh, well director's cut uh in 2019 he started the odd family <laughs> zombie for sale Okay, so the plot of this movie is that a zombie escapes from, from like, the lab that's trying to, like, dispose of him, uh, and then sort of joins a family of oddballs, because they discover that his bite can make people youthful again, mm -hmm. or can it? Uh, Kim dan Gil plays the middle child of the family, an only college graduate, who returns from working in the city after he got canned. Um, this movie is something. It's it's very much something. Um, it's something. It's goofy. I couldn't it's make like, it through, and I I, I, I had to drop it. Thing. And not only did I watch the whole thing, it was the first thing I watched this ooh, year. Ooh, I started my <laughs> year off. Started with the new. It. Great. I thought, like, I don't know if you picked up on this, but like with me, I thought, okay, so. It's a comedy, like that's mm -hmm. how it's yeah, set it's, up. Like it's a goofy, so it's a goofy z which is like a normal thing, especially in yeah. zombie films. So like that, like didn't bother me. Actually, like the comedy thing, like didn't bother me, except for the fact that it was like weirdly boring <laughs> yes! comedy, and I was just yes! like, "What is? It's just a weird tone. It's like I I can't describe it in any other way than like." comedy whispered and i don't like that doesn't make any sense but it's just it was comedy so, in lowercase yeah it was so weird like it was just it was like boring movie. and i was just like i don't know if i want to say this <laughs> and then like, i didn't it get much better like it like 
it's not the worst part is it's not like it's bad like it's not a terrible movie like, it's just not yeah, like, delivering what you want from it what i what made me go away from it wasn't like i was not liking people's performances or thought the even that like generally the lines were weird or anything it was just mm-hmm. like i'm just not feeling this this is just not what yeah. i want <laughs> yeah uh in 2020 he was a uh, main lead in the horror the cult classic horror the closet uh mm-hmm. where a man's daughter goes missing uh after they move to a house with real bad vibes <laughs> it's a real bad guy. real bad real but, bad vibes but he, yeah the the town doesn't real know bad anything <laughs> He's not good uh, at those vibes. <laughs> so yeah, so the kid goes missing. The dad, no one is able to find this kid. And then Kim Nam Gil shows up. Uh, <laughs> he plays an exorcist, ghost hunter. Yeah, he's more of like a cultist, maybe. Like he's uh, like who an exorcist, like, but not really. <laughs> yeah, he's like, listen, I know what happened. He just to your likes daughter. it. <laughs> your daughter was kidnapped by a ghost. He's like a feeling, and, and there's been many children kidnapped. <laughs> by ghosts i watched it it's also on tubi for free (laughs) i also watched it um what what a movie uh, yeah like it wasn't the best movie Mm -hmm. um but i do like my personal like favorite brand of horror is supernatural ghost paranormal Mm -hmm. stuff so like within that like it it was a fun watch because it was my preferred genre um it was just not as great as I wanted it. Um, that was my thought as well. I was like, yeah. that was a movie, and I watched it, and I don't, like, regret the time I spent watching I did, yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't regret it, like, but it's, like, largely kind eh. of, like, forgettable in a way, you know? It's like, eh. It was, eh. Like, he was, they were all, everyone in it, was, and it's so yeah. weird, because, like, he was good in it. The little girl the was dude, great in it. The main girl, yeah, they were all good in it. Yeah. So it was just like, okay. It's just, yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, it was fun. It is what it is. Uh, so in 2020, he had a cameo in the wacky, plain hijinks, hijinks comedy gone wrong. Uh, okay, Madam, where he literally plays a dude who gives himself sleeping pills to get through a flight and then sleeps through all the action of the flight. <laughs> and he's just sort of like a bookend comedy cameo. Uh, in 2022, he had a main role in the movie Night Trip, uh, where... He plays a crime novelist, I think. <laughs> Listen, I had a hard time finding out information about this movie. Yeah, I didn't so watch he it. plays a crime novelist uh, whose novels suspiciously resemble real crimes that a detective is investigating. So the detective starts to investigate him. Mm-hmm. Uh, also in 2022. Has it really been released? Like, I don't know if it actually that, has, actually. It was, it, I, okay, it was, it was at like a, a film, film festival. festival. Oh, one of that. But okay. it's not a release for any of us to enjoy yet. Gotcha, so, gotcha. Yeah. I was like, there also is in, no stars on it. <laughs> yeah. Also in 2022, uh, he played the first officer pilot in a movie called Emergency Declaration, which is about a bioterrorism attack on a commercial flight between Korea and Hawaii. A lot of these terrorist attacks on flights between Korea and Hawaii, who knows why. Uh, I know that Sky and I watched this just last night. Yeah. We watched Emergency Declaration. Not together. Yeah. Not together, just independently we did. Um, it, it's another one of those movies that delivers exactly what it tells you. <laughs> I will say, um, emphasis on bioterrorism attacks. Yes. So, like, okay. if you're thinking, okay, airplane disaster movie, that's still an accurate description. But, I mean, you're talking, like, coughing and throwing up blood type yeah. situations. Mm. So, not for the faint of heart when it no. comes to things like that. But as far as acting, brilliant. Like. Yeah. Well, very well, well acted. Everyone. If you go yeah, onto any I, site and look at the cast list, it's yeah. like every I will star. Say, no, gonna, I will say this: this movie, it was fun. Like I enjoyed watching it. I've never seen a movie like underuse someone like Im Shuan more in my life than I have <laughs> this movie. Like he, 
he did great with his English like, though. He worked yeah. cuz cuz I watched behind the scenes interviews and stuff mm-hmm. and he he talked all about like I worked so hard on my English because my character was supposed to be from America, guys. Like I worked so hard. <laughs> um, and like he does a great job, but it's just, like they could have they could have mm-hmm. given him so much more to do. Um, <laughs> I almost want to do like a like a spoiler episode about this movie because Sky and I had so many thoughts. We can so many thoughts. <laughs> I just we gotta can. watch it. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but so yeah, as far as that, I recommend it for the acting and the cast. As far as I, I do want to like warn this, it was it was filmed completely before the pandemic began. Um, so as far as do I think that this movie would have been made post pandemic beginning? No, like no. it would have not been okay. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as is it incredibly offensive? Everything? No, 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 no. no, no. no but as far as like. Just, you know. If, if it had been made today, it would have real read the room energy to it. You know right. what I mean? So like, mm-hmm. since it was actually filmed before the pandemic, and you know, I think that it was probably smart of them not to release it <laughs> like before vaccines. Like, yeah. Pandemic. Uh, but yeah, I do know it was kind of like one of these things that was like majorly hyped up for a while too, like as a big blockbuster type movie, especially with the cast. Oh. Um, so they probably were very much hurting that like they per- like probably spent a pe- pretty penny on this, especially with the cast. Your you know just your cast budget alone is going to be huge, and I'm sure that like you know the special effects or anything like that probably boosted it up. But like I know that like they had intention of this being kind of like a the blockbuster hit, and then got pushed back and pushed back, and then finally we were like, okay, we're gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they do on YouTube. There is an episode of Game Caterers or what? Mm-hmm. Game Changers, Game Caterers, Game Caterers, and it's really fun. So, like, if you want to see all the fun mm-hmm. cast do stuff, check it out. Cool. Uh, in twenty twenty, we made a cameo in the movie Hunt, uh, where he plays a Secret Service branch agent in Tokyo, and the movie's a spy thriller set in the eighties about NSA agents searching for a North Korean spy. Mm-hmm. Fun. Uh, and in 2022, he's also the main uh, in a movie, A Man of Reason, which is also only shown at TIFF. Yeah, it's, it's not a, available yeah. yet for people to see. So when I tell you, I had to read several articles to figure out, and I still might be wrong. I'm pretty sure I know what his role is. <laughs> but stay with me. If I'm wrong, don't hold this against me in the future. I tried. I tried, and therefore, <laughs> no one should criticize me. Um <laughs> So basically, after the taking fall for a crime on behalf of his mob boss, a man leaves prison with the sole intent to quietly live out the rest of his life with his ex-girlfriend and their daughter that he just found out that he had. Uh, and Kim Nam Gill plays the right-hand man of said underworld boss who decides to send hitmen after him because he thinks he's got shifty motives. Okay. But he's not really going to stick with the crew, as it were. Uh <laughs> So maybe that'll come out somewhere mm-hmm. soon, and we'll get to enjoy it. Uh, and then sometime soon, sometime in the future, he's apparently going to star in a movie called uh, Josen Firefighter, which is oh, a yeah. Sega comedy where he plays a firefighter <laughs> in the Josen era. <laughs> <laughs> this, this might be his romantic comedy finally <laughs> happening. <laughs> this, could be it. this could be it, ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary it's friends. It's really funny because there's only two people in the cast, so yeah, it's a romantic like comedy. Is with Kim Sung Hyun. We don't know. We don't know. They, this is a movie. Korean movies do whatever they want. <laughs> it, could be, it could be the gay rom com firefighters and chosen movie of our dreams. I'd pay to watch that. I, I would too. Hey, you might as, you might as well start the fanfic now. Yeah, <laughs> like, just have like, it like. I'm gonna up. write. A, I'm gonna write a spec script. I'll send it to like Gil Story <laughs> Entertainment. Be like, yeah. yo, my boy, have I got the rom com for you? Slides it across the table. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so that's that's the first movies, but we're not done yet because mm-hmm. he's also been in a ton of shows. Uh, in 1999, he had a bit part. <laughs> In school one, where he played a student back in the day. <laughs> and that was uh, his debut. That was his debut, his first time ever doing anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 2004, 
he was in the, the, the show Sweet Buns, which is a 26 <laughs> episode rom com. I, I feel like it's one of those that, like, they didn't quite know what the title translated might have connotations <laughs> for. Uh, he's just like a like a side, like a you know a guest role essentially, uh, playing the fiance of like a secondary character. Like he's tiny, tiny. Uh, in two thousand and five, he was a support role in the hundred and sixty three episode long <laughs> family drama, "Be Strong, Gum Soon." <laughs> I must, I'm gonna go out and say I did not even look for this one. No. To, like, check it out. <laughs> nope. Nope. Um, so in 2005, he also had a guest role in the political drama, the political, uh, like military drama, The Fifth Republic. Um, it was basically like a bit, bit role. Mm-hmm. So he didn't have like a big role in it whatsoever, uh, which is about the takeover of the Korean government in 79. Uh, and as we previously mentioned, he was in My Lovely Samsoon in 2005. Uh, he played a, a doctor. He had he had lines. Um, yeah. Pretty much one of the, I think the second um, second lead female character. I think she goes in and has some doctor friends that she speaks with. A mm. couple. And uh, that's the dude. He's, He's one the of them. Dude, and he yep. always has a sucker. Like, he doesn't. He, he just has, like, chatty chat stuff and that's it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 20, 2006 26 in 26 <laughs> uh, in 2006 he had a main role in the ensemble uh, drama Goodbye Solo his first sort of like main credited role which is 16 episode KBS drama um, that's basically about all the people in this neighborhood whose lives interact told through uh, the story like told through the eyes of like the a, a mute lady in the neighborhood who runs a little restaurant Hmm. so these are a lot of these like the older like if it's before 2010 good luck my friends this this, this next one one, this next one's on vicky yeah Um, and i might have watched some of it (laughs) oh so in 2006 he uh he had a support role in the drama lovers uh, which is about a businessman and gangster and a plastic surgeon. I assume they become the lovers, but he's not yeah. either of those people. He is a gangster, is what he is. Love it. He's Love kind it. of like the comedic relief. Like, kind Perfect. of. There was a scene where, like the main the main gangster guy, like something happened to his shirt or something. He's and so he looks at Kim Nam Gil's gangster character and is like, "I want your shirt," you know, like just. Now That's you're going to have to wear the loud-looking Hawaiian shirt, because I don't want to wear it. Like, I'm going to wear this nice, you know, I'm going to take your mm-hmm. shirt. Just that type of character, like the goofy yeah. gangster. It it looks exactly like you'd expect it to look. For a two, <laughs> super for dated. A, super for dated. 20-episode gangster rom- <laughs> drama drama. But you can watch it. <laughs> you can watch the whole darn thing if you want to. I just looked for where Kim Nam Gil popped up. That's what I was, <laughs> yeah, I was like, like going into like Vicky and stuff. And I'm like, Kim Nam Gil, okay. <laughs> uh, in two, uh, 2007, he was in the drama When Spring Comes. Uh, he had a main role in that. The, um, what's really funny on this is on my drama list. The very first the review is, "I watched this drama for Kim Nam Gil," Kim Nam Gil. <laughs> but um, they liked but they it. So liked it. Yeah, they said it was pretty. It was pretty fun. Uh, a little romance is lukewarm, but you enjoy it. That's what they said. So, <laughs> there's a you know love triangle that I assume Kim Nam Gil is a part of. Uh, second male lead energy <laughs> coming from the posters and everything. Uh, have not seen this one. Did anyone know? I, I don't. I'm not sure that it is anywhere. I don't think it a limited, was. We had a limited time to find these things, you know. Well, and they have to exist somewhere, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they have to, we have to be able to find them. Uh, and then, of course, the role that made his career. Um, he was a main lead in Queen Sunduk, which came out in 2009. I'm going to be real, it's 62 episodes long. <laughs> I didn't have, I didn't have time. So this this is on watching platforms. I did go check out his character, like when his character pops up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which, for the record, 
So, like, this was very intentional. Like, the production crew knew that that character was going to be, like, a fan favorite character. Mm -hmm. So it was very intentional that they waited until episode 21. Yeah. Oh. 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 No, I see if I had decided, yeah, I'm going to watch this because I would have been so mad. Every episode, <laughs> you're like, what? Role. what is this? What's going on? Oh my on? God, did the episodes right. were 65 minutes long. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> it is also, so like, if you're thinking, oh, it's a historical, it must be beautiful. No, this was during the days that historicals weren't pretty yet. Like, it's, mm-hmm. you Lovely. know, bad but costuming. Is it, is it, yeah, is it? enticing is it entertaining i, I don't know people loved, it, so. people loved it but his character like as far as when he shows up i think he's kind of like the long lost son of one of the royal family or something mm-hmm. but he he's very he looks lowborn um bedraggled but like it's all about he's just about his food and but he's like, really good at fighting go, like gonna be honest looking at a pic of him in it mm. Well, a lot of people fell in love with him from, yeah, I can from see this why. show. I can see why. Like, but uh, it's pretty much see. like, did he kill a ton of dudes just over the fact that they knocked over his chicken that Probably. he was eating? Yes, that is definitely what he did. <laughs> and so then, so like he slaughtered all these dudes and he has blood on his face and then he does this little smirk and that's oh, pretty much yeah, what everyone yeah. was like, oh, okay. we're gone. All right. <laughs> all right. Just is his character gonna... doofy as heck? Yes. But like, hey, he smirked when he killed people. So there you go. <laughs> it also has uh, Yu Sung Ho as, I assume, a child actor at this point. This is a while ago. Uh, so that's interesting. Anyway, uh, that's that's available places. Uh, this, is, this is another one that I saw. didn't realize he was in. He had a cameo role in the 2010 drama Personal Taste, which was one of the first dramas like it was very early on in my drama watching i watched it like the first couple of episodes very early on but definitely not the kim namigil episode uh he plays man sitting in cafe in episode 11 so (laughs) watch out for that uh and now in 2010 he was the main role in the drama bad guy which i believe sky watched the entirety of I sure did. I I worked hard for this episode. <laughs> um, That's perfect. So bad guy, bad guy was probably the first for this episode. Like when I was doing extra watching for this episode, bad guy was the first one I picked up because <laughs> because it had 2010 energy, oh, like yeah. mm-hmm. the styles, super 2010. The cast. How am I gonna say no? When mm-hmm. Kim J. Wook is also in the main cast. There like, I am going to pick that up. And, and then Jung also, so yeah, I forgot. Really cool. I didn't know at the time. I turned it on. I was like, Jung So Min, she was a super young character. Um, that didn't stop that character from trying to hook up with his character. <laughs> but oh, it's called Bad Guy for a reason, okay? Like, so it, it's a revenge story, like, straight up revenge story. He is. He starts off as a stuntman, so he you see him doing like crazy like skydiving and all types of stuff. Um it is a weird show. <laughs> it is super addictive. Like I binged it so quickly. Um <laughs> he has very sexy energy, like he's trying to woo like <laughs> Man the entire energy. family. Like it's <laughs> It's all a thing. It's it's typical revenge story as far as are you looking for a happy ending? Do not come forth for this show. Like mm. just no, just. But uh, I had a really good time watching it. Super dated. Do I really recommend it? Only if you want what I just explained. Like super dated. <laughs> um, is he a heartwarming character? Not really. Like. <laughs> Do you feel for him he though has, sometimes? Has a sure. real douchey mustache in it. His hair is glorious <laughs> though. He has a lot of ponytail action. Oh, love it. I mean, love it. as as does Kim J. Wook. Like the outfits okay, and the hair. Know. But then it, it's great. We'll get you, we'll get in you fact, through the day, get you through the day. In fact, know? is is there some bromance energy between their two characters? Ooh, there is. Ooh. Like 
it's great. Stop. You don't have to sell us anymore. <laughs> We're there. <laughs> Stay less. As far as is the plot confusing as heck. Good <laughs> luck with the plot. <laughs> Uh, in 2013, he had the main lead in another drama I know, Sky. I actually <laughs> did. I did start this one too, uh, called Shark. It's also called uh, Don't Look Back. On but this one's on Vicky, Vicky, right? It's on Cocoa. Well, I'm, that's where I'm. I'm sure Cocoa or Vicky, depending yeah. on what your settings are. Um, it might be under Orpheus too. It's kind of hard to make pop up. Mm. Just, it's a uh, thing. I think I saw it yeah. when I was looking in Vicky. Under Kim Nam Gil specifically, yeah. uh, it's got him. It's got Song Song Ye Jin in it. It's got Ha Suk Jin. I love Ha Suk Jin so Jin. much. Uh, it's just, it's such a good show. Um, so Natalia, how did you feel about the bit that you watched? I'm I'm in it. I'm, I'm oh God, it has watch it. He's so young. I'm gonna it. keep watching. Yes, it has. That's so. BT dubs it has him in it like that's a big deal and he has a lot of screen time don't don't be confused oh my gosh. He's on a lot. okay um oh, man. however yeah. I, w- I, w- I will forewarn they do flashback episodes at the beginning for like a handful of episodes so it's the characters when they're in high school so it sets up really like good it is a revenge story it was on my list of like the drama to try I just didn't get to it so I actually so check it out sometime um the high school the people playing the high school character high school version of the characters super good job the dude that plays his high school version um kim nam gill's character's high school version he got a won- an award for it oh, like wow. he's brilliant um yeah, it was really good th- okay. they did just great um do i have a 2013? again is it kind of it's less confused it is less confusing than bad guy Shark, as far as if you're picking one, definitely pick Shark. Shark is actually a okay. brilliant show. Yeah. I would I would give awards to Shark if I could. Would I give awards to Bad Guy? No. Like I just had fun watching it because it was I mean, I can crazy. change my 2013 and just put Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think you really might like it. It is so yeah, it's very revengey. Um okay. does it maybe da, da, jump the shark right at the end? It might um like every so, drama in that time period too <laughs> so yeah like as far as as far as if you're really needing a narratively correct ending good luck but okay. like that's that um he does a great job did you get to see him like so natalia you, okay. you watched a few episodes did you get to see him doing a lot yet because not, like, yeah, not, not yet not yet not okay yet. yeah I'm, I'm excited to keep watching that's all i have to say uh, but yeah, it, even he he has a lot of shared screen time with mm-hmm. So Hyuk. Like, there's just a lot of. I think a lot of mm-hmm. people would really enjoy it. Sunny Jin is great in it. She is a prosecutor, as too. Like mm-hmm. in high school, they knew each other and all these things. But also, she is a prosecutor, and her of a Chable family. Like, I mean, it's all this family crap. So oh. yes, yes, yes. Everyone, go watch it. Um, Vicky Kokowa, whatever you want to find it on. Cool. In 2017, he starred in Live Up to Your Name, where he plays like a doctor from the Chosen era who time travels into the modern world and then time travels back to the Chosen era, bringing a uh, hot doctor with him. <laughs> um, it's, it's like a comedy, like a romantic fantasy comedy situation. Uh, I did not get around to it, unfortunately. This is not something I, Jesse's going to pick up. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I watched a couple episodes like a couple years ago. Just, I, I wasn't I wasn't even like mm-hmm. tracking him at the time. I just saw it on Netflix or something and mm-hmm. somewhere random and I just decided to try it. I do remember it. it being brought up, so. Yeah, yeah it, it, it just didn't set well yeah. with me. Like, it's, it's the, so Kim Nam Gil has a variety of genres that he covers in his dramas this is very representative of the hyper comedy one mm-hmm. yeah like so you, you got to be okay with like yeah. the comic book character silly faces and stuff mm-hmm. which some people find that charming so that's that's great like if that's something that you dig some people fell in mm-hmm. love with, like this is the role that some people like really yeah. fell in love with him so i i've heard that the chemistry isn't that great mm-hmm. When I watched the beginning, they, you know, I'm, 
I'm hardcore enemies to lovers, but they were just off-putting together, <laughs> so I just didn't have a good time. So, like, that's why I didn't. Yeah, so I'm looking at some of the comments that seem to be like, yeah, it seems like they don't the have- energy. The energy is yeah. weird. And I'm not picky about that stuff, but, but the energy was off. It's a, got a high rating. I mean, like, it's my drama list, so that doesn't matter. But still, like... Yeah. People love... I know that there's lots of people who really love it. So... Yeah. That might be you. you like it? Good for you. No, yeah, absolutely. That. Yeah. Uh, in 2019, <laughs> Fiery Priest. <laughs> I tried, guys. <laughs> this is also je- not a Jesse Earl. I knew I that. I <laughs> tried to watch the Fiery Priest so many times. And it's not that he's not good in it. He's great in it. Oh, he is. He's got to be great. There's a second season of it. <laughs> <laughs> and he won so many awards. Yeah. It's not for me. It's... Mm. So it's super cartoony on purpose. It is based on a comic book type situation. Um, webtoon. So like, again, if that's not your jam, to to the point where even the way they filmed it, it's he punches somebody and sometimes they purposely do like slow-mo of the blood coming out of the nose like it's supposed to be silly yeah um as far as if you're wanting some really good fight scenes though it does have them to its credit and you also get kim won hay in guy liner and leather pants so like that is the selling point with really weird russian accent so like it's whatever Mm -hmm. um I, I do say there was there's a scene at the beginning, two scenes at the beginning that I think are actually really funny, and I think that a lot of people would genuinely find funny, mm-hmm. even if the rest of the show is not really your cup of tea. And those two scenes, and it's not giving anything away. The two scenes are there is a Korean shaman performing an exorcism in this community, and uh, the dude's faking it, and so Kim Nam Gil's mm-hmm. priest character comes in and like kind of threatens the guy and yeah. it kind of reveals that like he's faking it and so like it's actually really funny and then he figures out the shaman was kind of fleecing the town for money and so he's he ends up chasing him on these like salt flats and like just really like who put you up i told you to not take money from the elders so like it's this sense of justice that this yeah. character and so then from there he goes and he finds whoever put him up to it so it's all really funny and it's a lot of fight scenes so you get you yeah. can get pretty much your fill within a good 20 minutes of the first episode but also the secondary scene that i find really really funny is he ends up in the police station after beating everybody up and as far as that one was pretty good (laughs) so this one's it's cute so like he's in trouble he's still he has anger problems so he's still like he's almost about Mm -hmm. to fight with the cops as he discusses this but who comes in but another catholic priest his buddy, pretty much the prosperity gospel preacher and the Buddhist monk. Yeah. And they all are like trying to vie with the cops for like, just let him go. You know, really trying to argue he, with the cops. His heart's in the right place. Like he just got so upset because of how these people were treating the elders. Like he's a good priest. Like, he's a <laughs> and, and, you, man. and like, you get the vibe, you get the vibe that Kim Nam Gil's priest character has done this enough that like yeah. the cop literally cannot let him go. So he puts him in the back in a cell. <laughs> Well, in the meantime, <laughs> these three guys, they're like, we're going to be as annoying as humanly yeah. possible until you let him go. So that you got the Buddhist monk on his knees with his little like <laughs> bell thing. You got the prosperity gospel preacher yelling with his Bible. <laughs> and then you got the, uh, Listen, the priest be world canting peace. in Latin. Like, so they're just when, being so when, obnoxious. When, when religions hold hands, there <laughs> yeah. can be true peace so it was it was funny like as far as do you see that a ton later not really but like it it was funny Hmm. there are charming parts i think the big part of his character that is nice is they do show his ptsd like what caused his ptsd when he Mm -hmm. was in special forces they show that a lot so if that's a thing it does involve children um but pretty much what keeps him going and getting angry about stuff is kids people keep screwing over kids and he gets really really angry and like rightfully so and he keeps on like fighting corruption but it's very typically the comical corruption levels like 
So again, it's not everyone's cup of tea. I don't know if I'll be able to watch every last bit of it. I was definitely centering on the Kim Nam Gil scenes. Mm -hmm. There are some really charming characters, though. There is a... There's a younger female detective character that she's kind of like dresses hip hop according to them quote unquote. But she <laughs> yeah. she's she uh she has a martial arts thing that like she's really good at kicking. So when she and his character are both like kicking butt, really good fight scenes. So it's fun. Obviously, some people adored it. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I uh, oh heard a lot. One thing I did actually want to say about the fiery priest: the cast got very very close. The reason for that was a lot so he didn't know this going in but he's he's talked about this i don't remember what show but most of those actors and actresses they felt like they were it was kind of it kind of felt like their last show offer that they were getting essentially because things were kind of starting to dry up for them Mm -hmm. and so they were kind of all struggling and Mm -hmm. So as far as they really wanted to come together to make a really good quality version of this type of show, like they they wanted to do the best that they could. And according to how popular this did, so right. Mm -hmm. So like, but they they really revealed like he Kim Nam Gil was struggling, and he didn't know that pretty much he figured out all of his peers on this show were too, Mm -hmm. and so they really confided in each other, and they were really good support system to each other, and so then the fact that it got. He was thrilled at how popular the show got because he was able to take entire bits of the cast onto variety shows and stuff and give them screen time and get them in front, like, hopefully get Mm -hmm. them more jobs. And so he really, so whenever he won all these awards, he, like, all the cast would cry for each other and stuff, genuinely. Like, they were just all very happy about their combined success as a team. And that's so like, even though it might not be like my favorite show, I'm it's a very heartfelt that. show for the cast. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really, really cool. Also, one side note, Honey Lee Honey, Honey Lee, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call her, she was in Shark with him back in the yeah. day. They were great in that. And she, her character's kind of bothersome and fiery priest, but whatever. But like they're funny. They're funny in the fiery priest mm-hmm. together. But as far as behind the scenes, they're really great friends. That's nice. Mm-hmm. They've known each other forever, I like obviously. I like so, but I wanted to say that about the cast. Seems like they really support each other, and I—that's cool. that's the type of thing I'm like, oh. So, in, anytime you see parts of that cast together, and you're like, wow, they're super close. Yeah, that's why yeah. they kind mm-hmm. of struggled. Uh, speaking of Honey Lee, he uh, <laughs> had a cameo role in her next show, Won the Woman, in 2021, where he was just just one episode, just cameo, you know, <laughs> friends being friends, that sort of thing. And then 2022. 2022 happened. <laughs> Ooh, the darkness. Which is my where, number one show of 2022. <laughs> where he plays uh, basically the first profiler in Korea. In Korea. Um, the show is incredible. It's so good. It's, it's incredible. I, I was thinking we should do a spoiler episode on it when you, yeah, we when should. you get finished. We should yeah. probably do it. I, like, I'm I'm to episode eight, so like I, I'm I've been trying eight. really hard to find a, a translation of the book because it's mm. based off of the book written by the his character is based on the Korean profile, yeah, um, but the book is also co-written by like one of the first, if not the first, Japanese profiler too. Like oh. it's it's got a tie in there, that, so I've been trying to find it and I just haven't. But I, I really enjoy the show. I'm not going to go much into it because we've just we've just now decided that we're yeah gonna we're going to definitely yeah do it. Uh, we're penciling that in. But um, I just love how realistically it portrays the frustrations that these people have, mm-hmm. like this this profiler and his team have dealing with like the biggest obstacle to them solving crimes is not criminals it's other cops yep. and that's listen and they touch on you, it like very much so yeah. in the show if you watch enough serial killer documentaries and crime documentaries <laughs> jesse know. and i do you very <laughs> learn that the reason most serial killers don't get caught is. for so long is not because they're criminal masterminds. Yeah, they're, they're not great <laughs> 
policing is stupid. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And the the policing is very much stupid in this uh, because nobody understands it. Yeah, it's it's not like... You and know. it's not it's not that they don't understand they also refuse to listen to the people yeah, who do and understand. And this is like so a huge change too. Like this is like yeah. a almost like a when you enter like introduce a new technology into a place and people kind of yeah. just start Can't like shutting deal. down because of it. Um it's incredible. This is it's just so good. It's the so single good. like thing that I think I mean he's great in everything, but I think this is his best role. Like hands yeah. down. I agree. I also agree. Like he's I think, like, what also makes it really great is that he, when you watch it, you understand how much care he put into the character. Mm -hmm. Like, he really did want to create this character with compassion and care and make it realistic. So that, like, not only was he not um, portraying the real person, but he was also not making a spectacle out of, like, the things. Because it's, like, the, the... things that happen and the serial killers he's talking to because he spends a lot of time part of like the thing is he did what like every other like you know you know profile team does they start interviewing serial killers that they already know of and try to figure out what like they did what made them tick like what was like what they liked about it or whatever and trying to like come up with that through their notes and stuff and like these are like horrific horrific people and they're all real people like the real crimes yeah Yeah. like i think they changed names and everything yeah yeah they meant yeah it changed a little bit but like it's it's hard but it's so good so good but also like so i'm totally not recommending that this show for people that of course could not handle Mm -hmm. watching something Mm -hmm. so i'm not i'm not saying that but as far as if you're if you are willing to watch uh, based on a true story And then the main character having a lot of heart Mm -hmm. and, but not in a very genuine um, way, just really wanting to help people and putting himself kind of in the difficult spot of solving these things just to try to save one more person and kind of even sacrificing, you know, kind of his own happiness on some level, like as far Mm -hmm. as sacrificing himself for a while in his life. It's just really well done, even as far as his character is shown as somebody who doesn't express his own emotions all that well. And so he's already an outsider to his Mm -hmm. peers, even just because of that. Mm -hmm. And so then when he starts being a profiler and he starts discussing things in a certain way, always with care, but even just their quote unquote interest in these types of things, people find them Mm off-putting because it's very like oh why are you why do you want to know how yeah, like they're willing like, to thinks. hear these really yeah. horrific stories and yeah and so like, then then they kind of get doubts even from their peers like mm-hmm. that's essentially that's creepy dude why are you being creepy like that's that's often the judgment that gets thrown at them um it's very heartfelt and so like i highly recommend it for that we will talk about it way more later mm-hmm. but i just want to emphasize i'm someone that doesn't typically go for these types of shows yeah the fact that it's an introvert character that is very heartfelt in what he's trying to do and it is conveyed very well throughout the entire story. Yeah. I think it's a very good insight into it's not like he's inwardly narrating the entire time, mm-hmm. but you almost feel it as you see his it character. Doesn't, he doesn't like inwardly narrate at all, but you like right. feel like he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's it's it is very, very well done, and that's it's a shame it didn't get more awards. I mean, you heard earlier the amount of nominations it got. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he talks about it a little bit in the that uh, Day Song Award. But, like, he, he like, mentioned the show was at the very, very beginning of that year. So he, like, he was like, I wasn't expecting it to get any awards because of the position that it was in the year. And I think that mm-hmm. might have been also it, too. So, like, probably, you know, it was already, like, so far away by the time these, yeah, you know, awards came in that they just weren't being nominated. I think it should have gotten a lot more, too. But maybe it'll start to show up this year as well. You know, some of yeah. the things. And I think yeah. it's on Vicky Kokowa as far as if you're yes. looking for it. yeah. Uh, and bringing it full circle <laughs> in 2022 slash 2023. 
He's starring in Island. I don't think we need to go into this too much. We need no. a whole episode about Island. If you he does a good Island, job. Spoiler right. alert, we like it. Spoiler alert, we're into Island. Um, oh, one thing I did read was he, he started personally reading the webtoon that Island is based off of oh, like cool. when he was way younger like he's been a fan for a long time and that's why he initially rejected the role because he didn't he didn't want to mess it up he was afraid that he was going to mess it up but someone said you can't immediately (laughs) reject it like you got to trust that we would do it in a heartfelt way like we're gonna try our best man like give it a shot Dude, like Jesus, <laughs> but like it, it's right. nice that he was like a long time fan of the work, yeah. so like that's pretty cool. And you can sort of feel that because he's bringing that energy into the role, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. anyway, so that's that, that's him. He's got <laughs> apparently another show coming out this year called Song of the Bandits, but there's literally no information about it. So, well, there's a post a poster dropped like super recently. Oh, did it? Mm-hmm. it hasn't been updated on my drama list yet, so oh, shoot, it's him. On a horse oh, with I like see a cowboy it. hat and oh, a big shit. shotgun. Oh shit! Ooh. They just they posted it in like the, the special images. Oh, okay. <laughs> Listen, oh. say less. You know, um, this is unlocking something within me. This, this is a different type of <laughs> who knew energy. who you who knew you needed cowboy. Oh, is this going to be on Netflix? Netflix. Apparently. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, wait a minute. It's set in the twenties. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesse's like, what? What? Say less, really. Like Plan to It has watch. someone in it. It has oh, Lee Hyun Wook. Oh Kim Sol Jin. Okay, never mind. Very excited for mm-hmm. this. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Say less. And there's a I don't know if it's even been confirmed that they're making Fiery Priest season two yet. I've heard conflicting. They, they I think keep it, talking it, about it got, it. it was a uh, COVID yeah. usurp. So maybe that, we'll look forward in the future. But I, I, I feel like they might have like filmed, a, like started mm-hmm. filming and then things happened and then. Yeah. Then yeah. Things happen. Uh, anyway, that's 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 it. That's that's the, that's the man. That's- so you, if you haven't, you might have not seen him. He's been around a lot, but you haven't necessarily had to have seen him. So go check mm-hmm. him out. Definitely, there's something for there's something for everyone. There really isn't that much rom com yet, but obviously he wants well, to he's do looking more. For it. He's, he's, but he's watching he's the rom coms with you. Yeah, he's watching them. Yeah, so he's one of us. One of us, you know. Oh, by uh, the way, also he's he's on a, a lot of variety shows. He likes yes. to travel a lot. Mm-hmm. He has a lot of like actor friends and supporting actor friends that they go and do a tech ton of stuff. He was, yeah, he was on an episode of BTS's like Bang Bang. Oh, Bob, this yeah. Called. And he's he, in Jin's new uh, booze show. So, <laughs> yeah, he's Jin, around. The, the reason Jin, so Jin wanted to be an actor from forever, and the reason was because he saw Kim Nam Gil. That's really cool acting. And so now that now they're buddies, that's pretty cute. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so he's on My it. Little Old Boy, which is easily found on like Kokua. Master in the House is always easy to find. Mm-hmm. The manager was easy to find. Yeah, it's on Kokua. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he, that's that's the man, man. That's that's our, our our little dilf. We call him okay. I'm calling him a dilf. He doesn't have any kids. <laughs> he's not married. He doesn't have any kids. He just. He but just he has really... he has dad jokes. Yeah, yeah he, he does. He has dilf energy. Okay, and those pictures at the you know they were the, dilf, that the dilf-y. gallery thing had. Yeah. yeah. They were dilf-y. Uh, anyway, <laughs> thank you for listening to this episode. This very long episode. But, you know, I feel like the deep dive episodes are always really long, mm-hmm. especially that they have, like, such a large yeah. breadth of work such as Kim Nam Gil does. That is uh, available to consume. That is, yeah. That, uh, <laughs> that helps. A, a lot of it, a lot of it is available, which is... And, and a lot of it's super free, free too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like, like don't everything on Tubi, version. like, all, like, there's, like, a bunch of movies on Tubi for absolutely free. Yeah. Absolutely free. Like, there's, like, two ads in a three-hour movie. Like, go nuts. <laughs> Uh, anyway, thank you for listening to our podcast this week. Uh, we are wherever podcasts can be found, but uh, we are also on YouTube. All of our episodes go up on YouTube, and you should uh, go follow our YouTube channel, where we also do live streams. They're super fun, and we hope to see you there soon, because who doesn't love a good mm-hmm. hang sesh? Uh, anyway, 
Oh, also, if you want to check out links and time codes to everything we talk about, you got to go to our website, certifiednunas.com, where every single episode of ours has time codes and links and everything to literally for our four years of content is <laughs> all there. Like you can find all of it. Um, and if you want to support this podcast, you can go to patreon.com slash certified newness to become part of the Patreon found family. Uh, where we have a good time. We put little extra little mini, mini things every once in a while. And uh, we have a movie night every month uh, where we actually just watched Okay, Madam, where he had a cameo. Uh, literally last week we did. Uh, and we hope, you know, and also patrons get special like badges on our Discord, which is free to join for everyone as well where we talk about all sorts of stuff and we have a good time over there on discord uh it's super fun and we hope that you join us anyway we hope you have a fantastic week as always keep washing your hands keep wearing the masks when you go outside uh think of your immunocompromised brethren of which i am one you can think of me every time you put a mask on you can go what would natalia do <laughs> anyway and as always keep enjoying asian entertainment Bye. Bye. Bye.